Hello, welcome to my channel, Becoming Bev. Many of you know I kind of had a rough month last month. Uh, this month is looking much better. Turns out it was just what I needed to spend some time at the campground with my friends Yvonne, Mo, and Christine. You may remember Mo from one of my videos. Mo had had a double lung transplant. She's doing great. She just celebrated her one year anniversary of receiving her lung transplant. And she's just um, one of those people you just can't help but laugh when you're around her. Hi, my name's William, and I'm a wide mouth frog. What's your name, little one? I'm Sammy, Sammy the snake. What do you eat, Sammy the snake? I eat, I eat wide mouth frogs. No shit. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I, I, my squirrel came in. I thought something jumped. <laughs> so, Mo, what's up with the double mask? <laughs> I need them. <laughs> <laughs> Mo, I love you. Thank you so much for your quirky, zany sense of humor. We laughed until our faces and our stomach hurt like there's nothing better than that and Mo is always full of shenanigans the morning that we left the campground she was headed to Dick's to look for a kayak and later on that day I noticed on her Facebook she was kayaking in her friend's swimming pool while they were out of town <laughs> I'd like to share a little note that I got from one of my viewers Heather it's a little long but hang in there it's really a beautiful story you are amazing I wish you could have met my mother before she passed. The two of you are cut from the same cloth. Her travel style was easy going and the destination was only a place to go. The real adventure was the things you found along the way by taking the road less traveled. She always loved traveling and took various combinations of us five kids with her while getting her Montessori teaching credits. So I grew up with a backpack and an incurable wanderlust. Dad always preferred to stay at home. We packed ourselves into a double cab VW bus and towed a pop-up camper then, and often financed our travels by picking up pop bottles and turning them in for gas money. Through loss, her home and 15 acres were auctioned off shortly after my dad died. She moved everything she had left into a small Winnebago and hit the road. On her own, she lived in her first Winnie, then upgraded to a 32-foot she called Jenny's Winnie, and continued her travels with three cats, a Great Dane, a Lasso Opso, and later a Golden Retriever. So many adventures. Her travels took her all over the country, as by that time her children were grown and in Wisconsin, Florida, Massachusetts, California, and Oregon. She started out on her own in her late 60s and went where the wind took her and her stories are legend in our family. In later years, she developed dementia and eventually settled in our driveway here in Wisconsin, where she helped us with our young children while my husband dealt with cancer treatments. Years have passed now, hubby is doing fine. Mom passed away at 92. My own children are grown and I'm newly retired at 65. As with my dad, my husband doesn't enjoy traveling. So I'm working on finding my rig to start short trips and then longer ones. I love your little van and your personality. Learning as you go is an adventure in itself. My dream is to build out a schoolie. Well, with lots of help as I'm unable to do that myself and eventually live full time on the road too. I'd love to get to know you better and someday to meet up out there. So if you pass a rig with the name Freebird on it, honk or chase me down, it'll be me exploring the highways and byways and all points in between. <sighs> so thank you, Heather, for that beautiful story. Thank you for sharing a part of your life with me. I so appreciate it. Your note moved, touched, and inspired me absolutely. I want to give you a little update on my mom's situation. 
my sister created a GoFundMe for. I'll put the link in this video description. She's up over $2,500 now for the $4,000 that she got, um, I'll call it swindled out of. I don't know. Anyway, um, we're looking at options. We're trying to figure out how to create uh, a situation for her that well, she'll be comfortable camping in. I don't think she's going to have enough money for a van. Um, so we're looking at maybe converting her. She has a 2009 Chevy HHR, which is a little bit like a PT Cruiser. At first I was thinking maybe a pop-up camper, but her car only has a 1,000 pound towing capacity. So that's not much. And typically the pop-up campers are way heavier than that, you know, coming in and on a Little, little, little coming in on an average of 2,500 pounds. We could do some sort of car camper conversion in that. And then I've also been seeing these tents that you kind of attach to the back of your car. So it almost makes like a living room or kitchen or whatever you want to create out of that space. So she could literally just like sleep in the back of the car, slide out, you know, where the uh, hatchback is, you know, into whatever she creates that room to be. But it, it'll need to be something that's easy for her to set up. If any of you have any ideas of an inexpensive way to get my mom uh, out there on an adventure, I appreciate any feedback or suggestions that you give me. Thank you. And thanks so much to everyone that contributed to her GoFundMe. Um, it's really, it's really moving to see all of you do that. And of course, friends and family have pitched in too. So I appreciate that so much. When I was at the van rally in Bevere, Missouri, one of the vanners suggested that I possibly look into getting a part for my air conditioner called a soft start. I've jacked with that cargo rack on the back here a couple of times, trying to make it something I like. And as it turns out, I just really didn't want that giant generator and that big cargo rack on the back. It made Jennifer have a really big rear end and difficult to find parking places unless you pull into a double space. So anyways, he suggested this product called a soft start. So I'm just going to read a couple of things from the Amazon uh, description on this soft start. That will be easier than me trying to explain it. So the soft start reduces your compressor startup power demand by about 70%. The ad here says enjoy cool air conditioning using just a small generator and a soft start RV. So your AC basically can start with a much smaller generator. We ended up putting that 3,500 watt generator on here just to start the air conditioner. It didn't need that much to run it. So now with the soft start, uh, I left my 3,500 at the campground for them to use there. I have a much smaller generator now that fits inside the van. So my goal is for everything I need, uh, to fit inside the van. So I had the guys at Griffin Automotive, the ones that originally installed my Houghton Bel Air uh, air conditioner. I took it back there and I asked them to install the soft start and make sure everything worked with the new generator and turns out it works like a charm. It was kind of funny too when I went to pick up my van from them after they installed it. They said, oh by the way we had a car show here on Saturday and we just parked your van out there with all the custom cars and open the door so everyone could see it. <laughs> so one more thing I want to show you is these awesome screens that I made for my front windows. I took a big piece of cardboard and drew around the edges. Drewer? <laughs> I took a big piece of cardboard and drew around the edges of my door and then cut the screen out, you know, just a little bit bigger than that tracing that I had done. Got my sewing machine out and sewed it up. And so now I have these window screens over the windows and I can roll my windows down and get fresh air in here for those nights that are cool enough that you don't quite need the AC on, but you do want a little air circulating. I want to give a shout out to my friend Travis from the YouTube channel, Travis Travels. I think the first video of Travis's that I saw was his dating video, like van life dating video. I was laughing so hard. I'm going to share a little snippet of that video. Prior to moving into the van, I struggled with dating. 
And it's no surprise that when I moved into baby, it got worse. If your van looks like shit, she's not going for a ride. Hey, you ready for a hot date? <sighs> I'm not getting that creepy van. Not happening. I encourage you to check out his channel, Travis Travels. He does some great RV and van tours. And then also he's just, um, I'll call Travis a hot mess. <laughs> <laughs> Next week, my daughter and I are headed to the Van Nationals in Albert Lee, Minnesota. So if you're interested, all you have to do is have a van. You can show up there, pay at the gate, but it should be a good time. Lots of nice people, live music, and um, some really amazing vans. I hope to see you there. So some of you may remember last year when I was trying to figure out my heating situation in the van and many of you suggested that I get like a hat, like a beanie to keep my head warm. So I ended up like getting this hat to keep my head warm with these crazy ears. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't need anything to keep my head warm right now because it's summertime. So I found this other hat that's like the summer version of this. It's a little bit weird, but I kind of like it. The ears are crooked, but it kind of does the same thing. So <laughs> it has these little balls on the end. You squeeze them. <laughs> All right, let me try this again. Has these little bulbs on the end, you squeeze them and the ears go up. <laughs> so I'm gonna end on that note. Remember to like and subscribe. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being on my channel. I appreciate y'all so much.